to the third movie in the trilogy. Definitely not going to be bad. I'm not a hero. Students look up to you. If I'm going to teach your kids something, I'm going to teach them how to fight. Follow me. To her. I'm not afraid of him. Magneto, he's my father. What? Him and my mom, they did. No, I know. X-Men Apocalypse. So X-Men Apocalypse was directed once again by Brian Singer, and it stars, once again, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, all the other people. You got a few Game of Thrones people coming in, you got Ty Sheridan coming in, you got Cody Smith McPhee coming in, and you have Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. If you don't know who Oscar Isaac is, it's because you weren't paying attention in the credits in Star Wars. So basically, in ancient Egypt, there was this being called Apocalypse, and then, and basically, he transfers his conscious into minds, kind of like how the ancient ones, like some sort of monarchy in the Marvel, in like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Here for Apocalypse, it's just kind of Apocalypse's body. He's vir virtually immortal, but his body, he's just changes bodies. So, and then he gets buried at some stage in like when he's in the like the body changing process and then he wakes up again in 1983 and he sees the world as some sort of place that needs to be cleansed of people because we just needed another Magneto so he goes around recruiting mutants such as Magneto, Psylocke, Archangel and Storm to become the Force Horsemen and they're gonna try to take on the take like eliminate humans like all the other movies and the X-Men are gonna say no and they're gonna push back. X-Men Apocalypse, like all the X-Men movies, has solid to great performances. Michael Fassbender, great performance. Jennifer Florence, solid performance. James McAvoy, great. Oscar Isaac, great? Question mark. Cody Smith McPhee, great. All these people, it's just like, are you either solid or you're great? I thought the visual effects were great. All, every, for all the mutants, they look, looked really good and X-Men Apocalypse, it had an interesting story as well. There was also that Quicksilver scene, and mate, that Quicksilver, that Quicksilver scene it was mind-blowing. It was so, like, the Quicksilver scene from Days of Future Past, great. This Quicksilver scene, even better than that. So that, this Quicksilver scene's mind-blowing, it's gonna blow your minds. The character development between some characters, Magneto, developed even further. I mean, he's had six movies. Where he's been developed, actually, kind of like five movies, let's forget Last Stand, where he's been developed so well, and this movie, like, probably gives him the most development since them seeing, like, since First Class. Cyclops, as well, has great character development, like, the one mutant that you're supposed to gravitate towards when you're introduced to this new X-Men is Cyclops, and that's great, he had really good development. And some character motivations were good to great for the Horsemen joining Apocalypse. Magneto had a great motivation. Archangel had an okay motivation, but you understood why it was so, so important to him. As for the flaws of the movie, there is the gratuitous Wolverine cameo. The motivation for Apocalypse is really ambiguous, so you just kind of assume he's bad because he wants to get rid of all humans. He's, he's exactly like Magneto, except not as- he, like, Magneto is by far the best villain, but Apocalypse, you just kind of like, oh, uh, alright, let's destroy humanity. There are also stages where there are too many characters for Brian Singer, Singer to, like, tell a story with and to, like, go to different places. Because about, like, 15 minutes into the movie, you introduce a Nightcrawler, yeah? And you introduce a Mystique with Nightcrawler, okay? Now just, you kind of forget about that because 40 minutes later, that's the next time you see like, Mystique and Nightcrawl, like, you see them briefly for a split second, but everyone see- you see everyone briefly for a split second. Like, you're introduced to Quicksilver, 40 minutes in. He, like, that's- he has this small isolated scene, you're like, uh, alright, he's in this movie now, great! Then you kind of forget about him as you go back to the other, like, the bigger story, and then you're like- and then all of a sudden Quicksilver comes in, you're like, oh yeah, he's in this movie as well. So the introduction for Quicksilver is kind of jarring. Other motivations for characters are actually quite ambiguous. Psylocke, she's just kind of recruited because? I don't know why Psylocke was recruited. She had no motivation whatsoever. Storm, Storm just has a really ambiguous kind of motivation. And of course, Jean Grey, she has a shot at Return of the Jedi. She takes shots at Return of the Jedi. She says that the third movie's always the worst in the trilogy. Hmm. Well, she's not really wrong there. X-Men Apocalypse is the worst out of the... Uh, 1900s trilogy, pretty much. So basically, I X-Men Apocalypse, it's okay written, it's really well acted, the visual effects are really good, the story was interesting, some characters didn't have enough development or motivations. 
I will give X-Men Apocalypse a 7.5 out of 10. Have you seen X-Men Apocalypse? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to become one of the platter pie and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.